art of catching beetles can be studied in Yasoso, in Cameroon, in the land of the Bakosi tribe on the foot of the Mount Coupe volcano, where I was for one week collecting information about how they catch the beetles for export through the whole world. Here's Cameroon. Uh, in the west is an English speaking uh, earlier a British colony, southern Cameroon, with the main town Douala, a harbor, a big one. And on the foot of the Mount Cameroon, Volcano Buea, clean air and nice city compared to Douala. Here you see the Mount Cameroon in the back, 4,000 meters high. To go to Nyasoso, we have to take the highway to Loom, and from Loom, uh, we have to take a, a road to Kumba, and on the way to Kumba, there's Tombel, a little uh, village where we had to let the car and take a bike to go up the hill. Here is Tombel, some flat Huts. And also here we find already some uh, collectors, everybody here uh, who finds some beetles, collects them and stores them mostly in alcohol for the collectors that sometimes come here uh, to look for the most beautiful specimens. Here make Hynorina Torquata Horizienta one. Tom Bell, there's a small road going up the hill to the Mount Coupe and on the foot one of the villages of the Bokossi tribe in Yososo, where I wanted to go to see with Stuart Boo and his collectors how you catch the beetles. The ride with the bicycle, with the motorbike is um, not very easy, a lot of sharp stones uh, on the road and it can last for more than half an hour to get up there sometimes the road resembles more a riverbed than a road. Sometimes you see these huge jungle trees, 50, 60 meters high, and at the end in also saw the main church that was built 1920 from the Basel mission. It's still the same as it was built 1920 and here you see some pictures from the fantastic photographic archive of the Basler mission while building the church about the people in this Bakosi village with the classical typical round huts for the women and the square huts for the men. and the mission headquarters on the foot of Mount Coupe. A white couple taking some minutes there and the chief of the village with his wives and his children at that time, 100 years ago. Still today you find a lot of religiosity, spirituality here, Jude Booth informing about the best place to look for the collection of the Beatles. And we already meet Edwin, one of the collectors of the Beatles, who already prepared some of his catches for us. He keeps them in his pockets on fresh sugarcane, females of Torquata, Imma, Coli, Colis, of Mekinorina Sawage and Polyphemus. He's happy. The rainy season started right now and a lot of these people come to the traps they set up. And here they pocket with the big males. Yeah, huge species compared to what we can get in laboratory breeding. They can be here up to eight centimeters long. A beautiful male here. Yeah, these are collector's items, 
And of course, most of them are sold dead, like here, Polyphemus, Mecunorina Polyphemus, we are looking for for our research project. And here, another pocket with males of Polyphemus and Torquata, Imali, Colicolis, and Savakei. In another hut in the village Nyasaso, we meet the Arab. It's his nickname, he's called Donimba. The Arab is the name because he has a small beard. And he already presents his collection here for Chut Boo, who is buying some specimens uh, to export in the whole world. And we see here what they collect this Megalorino, Megalorino Harisi here. And in the plastic boxes are the living beetles, like here for us, the, oh, the living ones. females yeah, right. of okay. Mecunorina polyphemus yeah. confluence, but also other species okay. in the other boxes on fresh sugarcane. Now the discussion goes on, of course, about the prices, but what we are here for is especially to see how they were catched, this Mecunorina sawagay here or also the very big and spectacular Torquato in Makuri Colis. Mostly the males are caught for collectors. There is also a huge diversity of other uh, flower or rose chevers here, like Chlorocola on top, or special click beetle, Brionide. And the discussion, of course, is mostly about the prices one of the 8 cm species of Mecunorina Torquata Malcolicolis can cost about 10 to 15 US dollars, that's 2 to 3 uh, salaries for a day's work of a man here. A lot of money. And here is a preparation for a group photo with the three collectors of the Arab, who you see on the right, this young man. Uh, are collecting the beetles for him and he's selling as an agent the beetles then to the exporters. Donny Pa wants to show us how we catch the beetles here. We go through a, a cacao plantation. This plant is now in bloom and it's typical that the flowers come out of the stem and of course also then the fruits of the cacao plant is coming directly out of the stem of the tree. They like to be more in the shade than in complete sunlight, so it's good to let some of the tropical giant trees standing here to produce a little shade for the undergrowth of bananas and cacao trees. And here we are already approaching one of the specially prepared trees for catching the beetles. It's not a huge tree, it's probably 10 meters high, but if you have good eyes, you can see some of the beetles uh, on the sap places, high up in the canopy of these trees. For my eyes, they were too far away, but they are, uh, of course, here trained to see the slightest spot of a possible people up here. Donny Boy is preparing his net on a long bamboo stick topped with the rib of a coconut tree leaf. And then you have to go with the net directly under the beetles that sit on the stem and if you are happy the moment uh, they let themselves fall they fall directly into the net that is presented on the new stem. That's the idea of this way to catch them but sometimes like for example in this case the animals uh, fell down but flew away of course afterwards and the net stays empty for this time, we will have to try other times. But here on this tree, Don Imba also has prepared 
some five liter plastic bottles with banana stuffed with bananas and here also they are attracted as you can see he will find some of the rose chavis in here but not only also stag beetles are attracted by the smell of the rotting bananas in these plastic bottles and can be picked from within the banana in this bottle yeah this is polyphemus here these are Savage and Harisi, a nice polyphemus female here. And on this tree, he has two of these bottles. So that's also a method that we use in Europe to attract flower beetles. It works very well. If there's not too much water getting into the, to the bottle where the insects drown. Also here you can see the cuts in the bark of the trees and the sap wounds. Of course, they produce a smell that attracts also the flower beetles. And other plastic bottles is now checked for beetles. And all the work is done in at around noon because then the beetles, they stay at the sap wounds and can be approached more easily. But also they are then very white because it's hot. Now here about 30 degrees, degrees in at noon and 100% uh, humidity more or less. Look how many rose chaves there are in this bottle with rotting bananas. It's uh, all harisi, yeah? yeah? So most of the beetles are not caught out in the real wild jungle, but in the agricultural uh, production sites where the people plant the crop plants like plantains, that uh, uh, vegetable, banana or cacao uh, plants. So you don't have to disturb the natural jungle habitats of the beetles to collect them. And here we see how the Arab is packaging the stack beetles. Interesting, I've never seen that before. He rolls them into a specially prepared uh, green leaf. This is Prosopocoilus Savage. Also a very common beetle here, also sold live to collect the uh, breeders and lovers around the world. So in this kind of a banana leaf in road, they can be transported home. And that's the ground of the jungle here with a lot of rotten leaves an ideal substrate for the larvas and here we are already on our little tour with Edwin that's the stem of one of the giant jungle trees 50 60 meters high and also here Edwin has prepared with his collector some trees that they check every day now in the beginning rainy season when it's the best moment to collect the beetles already here we have seen something on one of the trees it's the same kind of tree it's the same shape of the tree and also here if you have good eyes you can spot some of the beetles from down there and prepare the net to collect them in the same way by holding the net underneath but wait the beetles and wait till they them. let themselves fall the as soon the as they are disturbed on the stem they let themselves okay. fall and here we have been lucky and some of the beetles fell into the net of Edwin and, and his collector 
let's see what they found here. This is a yeah. nice flower beetle with a white mm -hmm. band on the metallic green elytras and uh -huh. another yeah. beautiful small flower beetle. There are dozens of species here in this hot spot of biodiversity on the foot of Mount Coupe where you also find mandrills and 200 species of birds a very interesting place for ecotourists and nature lovers also a little bit dangerous because there are now uh, rebels on the way here just two days after this pictures 12 European tourists were uh, caught hostage by a rebel group and had to be released by military, killing a lot of the uh, rebels here. And also here you see the net under the wound of the tree where the beetles sit. And I think also here Edwin was lucky. He caught some of the beetles in his net. Is this method of collecting beetles sustainable? So from what we see now here, uh, it seems so because they catch the beetles only at specially prepared trees in agricultural land and the natural habitats of the beetles, the jungles, they are protected. But uh, one of the problems for the Habitat protection of these beetles is the question where the larvas live. Here we see some other rose chavers up in the tree. If you can look up, it's okay. Where they have been spotted by Edwin and his collector and they think about whether it's worth to take out the long stick with the net to catch. Them. So we don't know where the larvas actually live. Here's another cut in the tree to produce the sap wounds uh, that produce the smell uh, that attracts the beetles in the wounds of the trees. Edwin explains here that they come because of this odor to the trees. So we don't know where the uh, larvas of these animals actually live. We never have uh, seen a documentation about the natural habitat, for example, also of the Goliath beetles. We are just waiting for the first information about that. And of course, uh, to find out uh, where they actually live, we must make uh, expeditions and uh, nobody wants to pay for that. I would be one of the first to go there if somebody would help financing an expedition like that. It's not uh, done, uh, not since the first uh, glimpse of an eye we had from a Goliathus beetle in 1771. Nobody found a larva. So how we can protect the habitats if we don't know where they live. So they must live somewhere in the natural grown primary forest in hollow trees. We can uh, only think about that or in protected places on the ground where there are no other animals um, uh, that could kill the larvas. Now the collector is also going with the net underneath the beetles here on this small tree. As you can see, it is not uh, old trees that have been prepared, but this tree is about 10, probably 15 years old and the method they are using here uh, they make already since two decades in the same way. For the people here from the Pakosi tribe they also earn some money and it's the money they earn from something that is connected with a natural habitat so also sustainability and habitat protection is a topic here for the people and it probably can help uh, keeping the habitats intact also probably with touristic uh, attractions that are built for example later around the collecting 
of the beetles. Now Edwin is looking whether we find something in this net here and hopefully there is also one or two nice rose chaver from Niasoso Cameroon that probably we find some weeks later in a little pet shop in Europe where you can breed and rear them at home for your fun and for your personal studies about the life cycles of this fantastic animal. I hope to come back here one day to make some more studies about the life cycle, especially also about the larvas of this big diversity of beetles in Yasoso Cameroon. Thanks for watching. If you like it, subscribe this channel.